Networking is an extremely important topic on virtually every cybersecurity certification exam, and it's important that you understand the protocols that they use. Hi, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, we're going to talk about TCP IP networking and the Open Systems Interconnection, or OSI model. These are both crucial knowledge as you prepare for your next certification exam. Now, the reason that networks are so important is that we trust them to carry all of our sensitive information. Networks route billions of packets for us every day, and we need to be confident that they're securely designed and implemented if we want to have confidence in our organization's cybersecurity posture. Now, TCPIP is an acronym that stands for Transmission Control Protocol, TCP, Internet Protocol, IP. TCP and IP are two of the main protocols that make up all modern networks. The Internet Protocol is responsible for routing information across networks. Now, the name is a little deceiving because the Internet Protocol isn't only used on the Internet. It's also used on the network in your home or office. Now, the main responsibilities of IP are providing an addressing scheme, known as IP addresses, that uniquely identify computers on a network, and delivering information in chunks known as packets from their source to the correct destination. IP is known as a network layer protocol. It supports transport layer protocols that have higher level responsibilities. The two main transport layer protocols are the Transmission Control Protocol, TCP, and the User Datagram Protocol, UDP. TCP is responsible for the majority of internet traffic. It's a connection-oriented protocol, meaning that it establishes connections between two systems before transferring data. TCP is also a reliable protocol that guarantees delivery by having the destination system acknowledge receipt of every packet. TCP's reliability makes it widely used for applications that require this guaranteed delivery, such as email and websites. Now, because TCP is connection-oriented, systems go through a handshaking process to create a connection before transmitting data. This process is known as the three-way handshake. TCP packets include special flags that identify the packets that are being used in this handshaking process. The SYN flag identifies packets that are requesting a new connection. The FIN flag identifies packets that are requesting the closure of an existing connection. And the ACK flag is used to acknowledge a SYN or FIN request. Now let's take a look at the three-way handshake process in more detail. In the first step, the system originating the connection sends a packet with the SYN flag set. This indicates that it would like to open a connection to the destination system. The destination system receives this packet and replies with another packet that does two different things. It acknowledges the original connection request, and then it asks to open a reciprocal connection in the other direction. This packet has both the SYN and ACK flag set. Now, finally, the original system receives the SYN ACK packet and sends a final ACK to the destination system, completing the reciprocal connection. Once this three-packet sequence completes, the connection is open and the systems can begin exchanging data. The User Datagram Protocol, UDP, is a much more lightweight protocol that doesn't use this three-way handshake because it's not connection-oriented. Systems basically send data off to each other blindly, hoping that the data is received on the other end. UDP does not perform acknowledgments and therefore it can't guarantee delivery. UDP is often used for applications like voice and video streaming, where guaranteed delivery of every single packet isn't essential. Network models provide us with a way to understand how all of these protocols fit together, and there are two different models that cybersecurity professionals commonly use. The Open Systems Interconnection, or OSI model, and the TCP network model. Now before I explain those, I just want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. These plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. 
Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my new cybersecurity videos as they come out. The OSI model describes networks as having seven different layers. The first layer, the physical layer, is responsible for sending bits over the network using wires, radio waves, fiber optics, and other means. The second layer, the data link layer, transfers data between two nodes connected to the same physical network. The third layer, the network layer, expands networks to many different nodes. The internet protocol works at the network layer. The fourth layer, the transport layer, creates connections between systems and transfers data in a reliable manner. TCP and UDP are transport layer protocols. The fifth layer, the session layer, manages the exchange of communications between systems. The sixth layer, the presentation layer, translates data so that it can be transmitted on a network. This layer describes how to represent a character in terms of bits, and it performs encryption and decryption. The seventh layer, the application layer, determines how users interact with the data using web browsers and other client applications. Protocols like HTTP, SMTP, and SSH exist at the application layer. Now, in addition to the OSI model, you also should be familiar with the TCP network model. The creators of the TCP IP network stack developed this model as they attempted to actually implement the more theoretical OSI model. Like the OSI model, the TCP model uses layers to describe different parts of a network communication, but it does so with fewer layers. The physical and data link layer of the OSI model are replaced by a single network interface layer in the TCP model. The OSI's network layer is simply renamed as the internet layer, while the OSI's transport layer retains the same name in the TCP model. At the top of the model, three layers are combined, with the OSI model's session layer, presentation layer, and application layer combined into a single application layer in the TCP model. Now, you may not hear much about these models in practice because they're rarely used and they're difficult to map to real-world networks. But you must understand the layers of both models because they are covered on exams. I hope this video helped you understand networking and network models a little better. If it did, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more cybersecurity content.